Mobile Madlala, Ekuruleni. Let's talk viruses now, and not COVID-19, HIV. An HIV variant has been found in the Netherlands. It's called VB. It reportedly spreads and progresses much faster. However, it does seem to respond to treatment. In South Africa, where around 8 million people are HIV positive, is there cause for concern? Let's discuss this now with Professor Salim Abdul Karim, director at the Center for the AIDS Program of Research in South Africa, Caprisa. Prof, thank you so much for joining us. So we are well aware of the mutations of COVID-19, but how, how much has HIV been mutating over the years? So both HIV and the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 are RNA viruses. The difference is that HIV has a reverse transcriptase step. Let me explain that. It converts its RNA into DNA. When it does that, it makes a lot of mistakes. And so we get many mutations in HIV, many fold higher than what we see in SARS-CoV-2. HIV, I mean, there are very few two viruses that look the same. There are so many mutations. But what we haven't been able to identify are individual variants or strains that are presenting and creating a different kind of clinical form. And that's what VB does. VB is able to cause a more severe infection. Fortunately, though, it's readily amenable and it's treatable with all of the standard antiretrovirals. SARS-CoV-2 does not mutate to the same extent as HIV, but we get distinct variants popping up every now and then, as we know from Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Omicron. How long has uh, VB been around? Is it something that's newly identified and only in the Netherlands? Is it present here in South Africa? And, and how worried should we be? Because it does seem to respond uh, to treatment. And so it was identified in a retrospective study. So in other words, they went back and looked at old specimens and found it. And they then followed those patients up and what they found was that they had a drop in CD4 count that was faster and they had a higher viral load. Now, VB is still spreading in Europe and is probably in other parts of the world, principally in the men who have sex with men population. So we have not been yet uh, had a chance to look at whether VB is present in South Africa. I would be surprised if it isn't, but I'm not concerned about it at all. And the reason I'm not concerned is that there are already multiple variants of HIV, some more or less transmissible, some more or less severe. All of those don't impact on anything we do for HIV, principally because we don't have vaccines for HIV, because vaccines would be affected. Hmm. But the treatment have worked. So that's the reason why we are not concerned about the strains in sure. HIV. So, so there isn't a vaccine for HIV, but there is something called PrEP, which is the pre-exposure prophylaxis, which essentially is a preventative drug. Um, could that uh, be affected by this VB variant? So PrEP, we now know from uh, people who have been using it for the last several years, can be highly effective in preventing HIV. So the use of PrEP needs to be upscaled so that large numbers of people are using it. And when that happens, we will see a reduction in the amount of virus transmission in the community. And when we see lower levels of viral transmission, that's when we are likely to see a lower level of these kinds of variants and lower, less opportunity for variants like VB to transmit. We know that the drugs used in PrEP are highly effective against all strains of HIV. So there's no concern about PrEP being effective, it will be effective against VB. And if we use it, it will actually prevent the next VB 
or reduce the likelihood that we'll see another VB. If there are so many mutations of HIV happening all the time, why has this one uh, grabbed everyone's attention? Well, it's because in general we haven't really bothered with, with uh, you know, variants or strains of HIV. We haven't bothered because it hasn't meant any change in how we deal with it. But with SARS-CoV-2 coming about and the variants causing quite drastic changes in the pandemic, we've begun to understand the importance of variants and, and how they can impact a virus. And so now that we know and we've got a better appreciation of that from SARS-CoV-2, we've been looking at it and researchers have now been looking at it in other diseases, including HIV. And this discovery of VB becomes important because it's laying the foundations for how we will start looking at HIV now in relation to variants, just like the way we do for SARS-CoV-2. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are learning a bit from SARS-CoV-2, applying it to HIV and HIV yeah. and our efforts to control benefit. All right, so it's, it's one sort of spin-off of our awareness of COVID-19. I note that Caprisa, uh, your centre, uh, has been added as a centre of excellence, a newest member of the Global Virus Network. Um, and I was wondering if, if that is what the focus of this network is. Uh, we know that HIV AIDS, uh, over like nearly 40 million people have died since it was uh, it first sprung up, um, uh, what, 30 years ago. Um, we, I think around 4 million deaths uh, to COVID. Is this network designed to, to monitor on an ongoing basis to make sure that we're better prepared for the next pandemic, dare I say it? Yeah, so the Global Virus Network is really uh, a major global player in monitoring what's going on in viruses across the world. It's essentially a network geared up to identify new global threats in terms of viruses. It comprises about 50 or so centers like ours we've just joined that are part and parcel of looking at these vital global threats. There are researchers and laboratories in the network that look at HIV, look at Ebola, look at HPV, and a whole range. In fact, they cover the full gamut of viral diseases. In HIV, we've got several you know, top-notch laboratories that are part of this network, and part of it is to look at the phylogenetic variations in the virus. So we will expect that the GVN, and we're very pleased to be part of the GVN, the Global Virus Network, in order to contribute to the overall skills that it has and participate in its research and training activities. All right. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us uh, this evening. That was Professor Salim Abdul Karim. He's director at Caprisa. We've got more on the day's top stories in just.